Welcome to part 10 of the Advanced Revit course. In this lesson, we're going to be creating a basic door and window schedule. And then a bit later, we're going to be creating a really nice and graphically pleasing door and window schedule that utilizes tags and parameters such as project and shared parameters. That's for later. Let's get into creating a basic door and window schedule. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as 20 hours of ad free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there. So under schedules and quantities, you're going to find if you right click that you've got a list of different schedules you can create. What I want to touch on first is the new sheet list. And this is what you're going to do to generate a list of all of the different sheets that are in your project. And you can actually adjust this and customize it. So let's go ahead and create a new sheet list. From here, you're going to be able to choose a number of fields that are parameters assigned to sheets. And you're also going to see that the drawing type field that we created before, the parameter that we made at the start to be able to organize these is also here. So we may as well add that to our schedule. You're also going to see that all of the other parameters are there. What I usually just like to include is the sheet name and the sheet number. The drawing type we can use to quickly organize our sheets and I'll show you that in a moment. All of the other ones are pretty useless at the moment. For the drawing types, I'm just going to bring that to the bottom, the sheet number to the top and we're going to click OK. And this is going to generate a sheet list uh, schedule for us. What I usually like to do with this is add it to a new sheet and that's going to be kind of counterintuitive, I suppose. But we're going to create a new sheet and we're going to add this sheet list to that new sheet. So schedules are just like any other views. You can just drag and drop them onto a new sheet. And here you're going to see our sheet list. It looks pretty dank at the moment. So what we can do is edit that in here. Now the drawing type, this is really just to see that you've assigned all of your sheets to you know, organize them. This stuff isn't going to be exported out or shown when it's published as a PDF. So um, you don't really need to show it in the schedule. I just like to turn it on and off if I want to be able to quickly go through and see which drawings haven't been organized. And I can quickly then draw in here. I can say this is one, two, three title. So we've created a new drawing type with zero title and that's going to show up here as well. And we can rename that sheet to be title page. And we're going to make this a triple zero. Now that sheet that we just created, that sheet list page is here and it's got the title page on it. Now what I usually like to do is add a perspective or a render on that title sheet. And then I'll have a sheet list of all of the different sheets inside of that um, title page. And here you can see that I did actually show drawing type for this um, project, um, but it really is not necessary because the drawing numbers should and do correlate to the different types of drawings they are. All of the plans are under the set 200. All of the uh, reflective ceiling plans are under 300. All of the elevations under 400 and so forth. So you don't really need drawing type. But what you can do is add a nice perspective to it. And we will come back with that later. You can see here for this project, I've added the drawing list. I've changed the name from sheet list to drawing list, which I think works a lot better. I've removed the border from that sheet list and I've then listed all of the different drawings with a nice perspective uh, shot of that exterior area that's being renovated and additioned to. So let's go ahead and create this drawing list or sheet schedule. You can see we've automatically generated one here, which is great. Every time we add a new sheet, it's going to be added to this. You can see at the moment that A000 is at the bottom of the schedule, even though it should be at the top. So let's have a look and see why it's being sorted like that. If we open up that sheet list and we go to sorting slash grouping under the other tab in the properties, you'll see that it's not being sorted by anything. We want this to be sorted by sheet number and we want it to be going in ascending value. If we click OK, you'll see that now it's categorizing all of those sheets in order of the sheet. For the fields, I'm going to go over to fields here and I'm going to remove drawing type by using remove parameter there. In this project, I'm going to open up this sheet list. I'm going to have a look at the filter. You can see that I've got two filters here. One was saying that the stage, which is actually the drawing type parameter that we've created in this other project, it does not equal 
triple zero a roof working or triple zero a working these are two working sets so any drawings or sheets that i don't want published or i don't want to show in this sheet list i'll put under this the drawing type or the stage in this case as one of these two things that way they don't show up in the sheet list and that's good Under sorting and grouping, you can see that we've just sorted it by sheet number again in ascending values. And then under appearance, this is where you'll change how it looks. So you can see that we've got no grid lines, no outline. You can see that um, we're not showing the title or headers and the text has been changed as well. Back in our sheet list on this project, if we look at the appearance under the appearance tab, you'll see that we are showing the grid lines, which we you know, don't need to. We don't need a blank row before the data. We don't need to show the title or headers and the title text. I'm going to make this 2.5 millimeters and the body text also a 1.5 millimeter text. If we have a look at what this looks like, I think that's probably a bit too small um, and that's because the sheet size is different as well. But let's go ahead and make this perhaps something a lot bigger. Let's make this a even probably three millimeter. We'll double that up. There we go. Now we've got the sheet list there. We can bring this in a bit and we can adjust how this looks. We just have that on one row. The reason why I turned the title off is because if you have it on, it will show for both columns. But in this case, I had to turn it off and then create dummy text note of the drawing list and just have it above one column. If we go back to our other project, we can probably turn the header on because we've just got one column. So I'm going to Go back here, go to appearance and show the title. Click OK. Here you can see it now says sheet. We need the title to be a bit bigger, maybe a six mil title, which is going to be quite big. And now you can see it says sheet lit. If we want to change that, you can't change it on the sheet. You'll have to change it back in the schedule and we can change sheet list to maybe drawing list and that will change it schedule. You'll see under schedules and quantities, you can also create a new view list. If we do that, you can see that we can add the view name and things like the view template, um, which we'll touch on shortly as well, which is a very, very nice organizational and stylizational tool inside of Revit. You can also show what phases there are, whether it's in new construction, demolition or existing phase. You can show the sheet name and number that that view is on, which may be useful or the title on the sheet. I'm going to go ahead and make sheet number show up and that's probably it for us. Let's go ahead and click OK. So you can see that all of the views that aren't on sheets aren't going to have a sheet number assigned to them. And so that's just, you know, something useful we can look at. We may not put this on any sheets. We won't publish it out, but it's a good way to organize your views and to look through them and see why you've got multiple views. Like why do you have two level two views? And that's probably going to be because of the ceiling plans as well. So you may want to rename these and you can rename them in your view list. Under schedules and quantities, you'll also see that you can create a new schedule or quantities. And this is the main tool for schedules and quantities. These other things are all pretty small or specific, not small. They're all useful, but just very specific. Under here, you can create a whole lot of different things. What we want to do is create, let's say, a room schedule. So we can go down and find a category and we can look for walls. We can create a wall schedule or a window schedule or a door schedule, or we can create a room schedule and we can schedule building components and we'll make sure the phase is in existing and we'll click OK. Here we can choose what parts or what parameters assigned to the room that we want to show in this schedule. And we'll definitely want the area. We'll definitely want the name of the room and perhaps even the room number. Even though we won't be referencing, referencing that in this project, it can be useful in multi-story projects and stuff like that. We'll leave that as is for now. Let's make the room number on the top by using the move parameter up button. The area can go to the bottom and the name is next. So that's gonna be from left to right. Here we've got the room number, we've got the room names, and then we've got the area. So this is a very easy way to generate an area schedule. Essentially what this is showing how big each room is. And again, changing any of these room names or room numbers is going to edit that 
across the entire project as these are parameters that you are uh, referencing which you've created earlier. So that's how you would create a room schedule. Now we've also got these door and window schedules that you'd already have seen that Revit generated for us when we open that architectural template at the very start of this course. Now already you can see that this shows a number of different fields which we didn't add but Revit added them for us. A lot of them we don't need but you will also see that none of our doors are being referenced. Where are our doors? And that's because the phasing is set up for new construction. So all of the new doors going in are going to be shown here. Because we've phased this entire project as existing, because it is, it is an existing building, we're gonna change the phase to existing. Now we can see all of the doors that are inside of the project. For the phase filter, I'm just gonna go show all just to make sure that all of our doors are shown. The great thing is, is that it's showing us the height of each door it's showing us the width of each door and the thickness if we had finishes assigned to the doors um, it'll show that and it's showing us the marks or the door numbers we could even just call this door number it shows us the level each door is on and it's categorized them for us and the way it's done that is by under sorting and grouping you're going to see that it's sorted by level and then it's going to sort them by level and then by mark and you're going to show that it's going to be creating a footer, the title count and totals, which is what this is. So it's showing that there's nine doors total on that level. You can then see there's a blank line after it, which is just trying to organize that properly. And then at the end, you see the grand total of there being 21 doors. So that's pretty cool. But what if we wanted an area of the door? This is something we needed for work. We need to get a general area of the height times width of the door just so that we can get cost. There is no area parameter inside of the door schedule. Not that I can see here anyways. So how would we go about doing that? Because we do have the height and width parameters, what we can do is create a calculated value and we can call this door area. If we change the type to area, what we can do is type the formula height and what we could actually do is find it here we can see that height is a parameter. Otherwise we can just type height. That's all it's gonna do. And we're gonna times that by width. Once we click okay, you're gonna see that this is gonna add a new parameter or a new column, which shows the height times width in meters squared. If we wanted this to not show in meters squared and we want it to be millimeters squared to match um, these units, we can come down to formatting and we can find where that door area is. And now under field formatting, what we can do is check and see what the units are. And you can see it's currently using the project settings. For area, the project settings are in meter squared, but we don't wanna use the project settings. So the units we can change to square millimeters. And if we wanted to round it to a certain amount of decimal places, we could do so, but we can leave that as zero because now in millimeters. And we'll just click okay, click okay again, and oh boy, there's too many millimeters. So instead we wanna show this as meter squared. If we go to door area, field formatting, and we change this back to square meters. All we wanna do is just show two decimals so it's more accurate. That looks a lot better. So the same goes with the window schedule. However, that's automatically generated for us. And you can also see that there are different types of parameters. You can see there's location and window styles, materials, glazing and remarks or comments. Under here, you might have for material, it might be the frame material. So you might say whether it's aluminum or timber um, or if the glazing is double glazed or argon filled or something like that. For the window style, this is where you'd have whether it's sliding or whether it's an awning, anything like that. And again, we're gonna to wanna to change the phase to be existing and for there to be no phase filter or to show all. And again, if we create a new sheet, what we can do is now drop these different door schedules and win window schedules onto that sheet. So here you're gonna see that that loads in that door schedule. If we drop the window schedule on, that also loads in the window schedule. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials, and resources, as well as 20 hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.